Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host. I thank you for watching our broadcast today. The cross, it's a very popular item for people to wear. Uh, some people wear it around your neck, especially I've seen some big men where they got this big cross that goes all the way down their stomach. Um, you have <clears throat> people wear it a bracelet with the cross. Um, of course, uh, very dainty crosses. Uh, mostly women wear the dainty crosses. I've seen some really beautiful ones. And uh, I've uh, shared that uh, with the uh, the women. And um, people have a, a ring. I have a ring myself with a cross on it. And uh, it looks all well and good. But in reality, uh, there's a, a man, uh, not a fictitious character, because if he was a fictitious character, there would not have been over the centuries, um, um, who knows how many men and women following him. Uh, matter of fact, one of the, um, one of the Jewish uh, scholars during the time of the New Testament said, just leave these men alone. Because if, if they're um, really with Jesus, if Jesus is real and they're real, then uh, what's going to happen is, is that you're not fighting them, you're fighting God. Because there was others that said that they were the Messiah and everything died away. So Jesus died on the cross, a vicious, horrible death, so that uh, people like Rob Schaefer and myself, and hopefully you, uh, could have our sins forgiven by accepting him and receiving him into the, uh, their life. Here's what took place on the cross. And what it said over the bruised body of Jesus, whipped and beaten for the world's sins, to know what love really means, you have to read between the lines. And what it's called is a beating, a sacrifice. That's what love is. People say, love, love, love. I love this, love that. Well, love is action. You know, if you truly love somebody, you'll show it. And, and Jesus Christ loved the world. And he showed it because he allowed his creation, what he created, because he's always been with God, always been the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. He allowed that to happen so that he could have a family, people could get saved from their sins, like my guest Rob Schaefer did, receive Christ. Rob, thank you for coming on the broadcast today. Um, I just want to ask you uh, to start off, what what's, what's the difference in your life uh, with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ than before you came to know him the way you do? Well, the first word that came to me was peace. Um, I think I dealt with a lot of anxiety and I had, um, I used to have a problem sleeping um, because I just had, uh, had a lot of disturbing dreams and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, in, 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 in a short answer, yes, I would say that he's just given me that peace that, that, um, that there's not much more to describe. I mean, that's, that's, that, that's truly, that's the first thing that he gives me is, 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 is that, uh, that understanding of, of who he is. And he just says, be still. And know I am God, and and that really has helped me tremendously. Especially in the, in the world that we live in today. Um, and as the scripture says, it's a peace that passes all human understanding. Yeah, so, it's a supernatural peace. 
and it only can come from the Holy Spirit. And 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 um, those without Christ in their life, they could be religious and churchgoers too. But if they haven't committed their life to Jesus, they will not receive that peace and that passes all your understanding. So um, nobody could tell you that Jesus is uh, not real and that Jesus can't do anything for you because you have tasted and seen the goodness of God. Um, so so when, when you're saying, Rob, about uh, a lot of things in your life that were um, disturbing and uh, um, uneventful, where you didn't have uh, uh, some kind of peace, uh, did, did that start from your childhood or uh, uh, did it just come on later on in your life as you grew up? Yeah, I uh, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of um, confusion from from me personally when I was growing up. Um, from my childhood, my father um, passed away when I was um, thirteen months old, so wow. I um, I grew up without. Having a father in the house, my mother um, raised me and my two sisters um, by herself. God bless her, and um, she did the best she could. But there was it was um, it was a frustrating situation for her, and um, and she was dealing with grief and trauma, and um, and so were my sisters. And that's what I was kind of not born into, but very very soon after my birth, and uh, and it took me a long time to to realize that. Um, that's what was occurring. I just knew our family was different somehow, but I didn't know how or why. Um, people would get quiet. You know, when I'd walk into a room, they'd be hushed tones and that kind of thing. I'm like, what's what's different about me? And um, I didn't understand it. I was raised Roman Catholic, and um, I went to, um, to a, a Catholic school for eight years. Um, and that helped. A little, but it wasn't giving me the, quite all the answers that I was looking for, and um, there was some some confusion. I had a lot of questions, and um, and they they couldn't really answer them for me. So I went to when I went to a public school, I um, I really found um, it was a funny story. I was um, I was excited about Christmas, and I was walking home with a, a, a schoolmate, and I asked him about um, you know well you know do, are you did you get your Christmas tree out? Are you excited about uh, about Christmas and everything? And and then he spoke Hebrew to me for for about five minutes, and I felt really foolish because <laughs> I just didn't think about it. Uh, but he opened my eyes to the the fact that that there are people that uh, that believe different things than me, that have a different faith than me. Um, so I just kind of continued um, a search, you know, myself to try to figure out what um, was was. Um, was the right thing and 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 it, it took me uh i have a long journey really um a lifetime to uh, to come to christ like i am now um but he's been there all along and, and that's the uh, what, what you said is so true uh he's been there uh from when you were in your mother's womb and 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 the thing is is um um you know rob uh every child needs a father um and a father that has a male body and um because that's what god created uh, 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 uh a mother a man and a woman a man le leaves their his uh father and mother marries a woman and they become one doesn't matter what the laws say doesn't matter what people said there's only uh one truth and that's god's word and and um so, so with, with with you not having a father, um, it, it it must have put some um, anger, I guess, in your heart, um, especially when other children were having, you know, they have fathers. Did did did, did that occur to you, uh, Rob? Um, I probably wasn't aware of it, but yes, there was. In retrospect, yes, there was a lot of anger um, in in. Uh, growing up were you introverted as a child because of that maybe very much so i'm introverted now <laughs> but, but your introversion but you're being introverted uh with christ because he's working on it 
um, yeah. must be a lot better than it was without Christ. Yeah, I I, I am more comfortable speaking to people and uh, and and to people. Um, but yeah, there was a long time where I felt like I was not, you know, supposed to talk or just kind of stayed out of conversations or just listen. So, so basically, uh, it was that spirit of rejection that the devil kind of put in your heart. Rejection, uh, unworthiness is a, is another big big one for me. Yeah. And 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 when you were in school, so basically you you were by yourself. You, you didn't have really, um, uh, you know, in, interaction with classmates. I didn't have, I had a couple of close friends, but I wasn't very social, no. So, so now grow, growing up, did you ever think in your life, uh, in your mind, um, why am I here and what's life all about? All the time, yeah. Um, and, and part of part of uh, my, my search, uh, when I, um, I stopped, probably around college age, I, I stopped going to church on a, on a, on a weekly uh, basis. Um, but I still, i still believed in God and I knew God was around and I knew he was there, but, um, but I didn't have the relationship I did where I used to go. I would find these, these places of solitude. I would go to the beach. I used to, I, I love, still love to go uh, to catch a sunrise off the water. Um, I'll go to the beach. I'll go to the woods, someplace that just feels like, like it's, it's just quiet and peaceful. And that's kind of where he was speaking to me. Um, it wasn't uh, when he, he, you know, presented himself to me exactly, but uh, I went there for, for peace. That's where I was going for just to, um, just to feel that serenity and just feel that, and to feel that awesomeness and that power. I mean, that was my church for a long time, just going to the beach and just experiencing that, that, uh, that calmness and that, um, the peaceful and, 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 and that's why it says in the scriptures in Psalm 23 to lie down uh, in green pastures by the still waters because the, the still waters what is a calming effect and, and 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 what you're doing Rob is you were you were in God's creation and yes. the, the peace that you got was an outward peace but the true peace you have until you go home and be with Jesus is inwardly. And that's like day and night. And that's the, the, the multi-millionaire, the billionaire, the trillionaire. Their God is money. They, well, I mean, like you need a trillion dollars, right? Um, they would change it and trade it in if they knew <laughs> what they would get within by receiving Jesus Christ in their life. So when you were in college, Rob, um, uh, as, as an introverted uh, uh, young man going to school now, did it stay that way or did you start to get involved uh, on the outward, maybe uh, to go partying, get involved with the things that other uh, young, ch uh, young um, children were doing in college or did you continue to stay uh, introverted? No, I was I was very um a, a very um very much um on, on my own, um, you know even when I would uh, go to work I would go to work do my job and and then go home. Um, my mother was um uh had um had gotten sick, so I was her uh, her caregiver for for a long time as well. So it was I had a lot of responsibilities, <clears throat> and um, I just kind of took care of them and and um. And that was it. I didn't. I, I. I. wasn't really a social person at all. Um, I used to write. I write poetry. I write um, stories and things like that. But that was more for myself and just kind of to uh, to you know, I guess I have a conversation. <laughs> so that also uh, was, that that also was filling the void too. Yeah, uh, because a, a lot of people just you know try to fill the void with drugs, alcohol, sex. Uh, outside of marriage, uh, um, gambling, uh, um, sports, uh, whatever they're involved in will fill the void, but it'll only be temporary. It, it'll be like while you're in it, the void is filled. But once you stop it, 
then the real you comes to fruition, right? Yeah, that's true. And so, 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 uh, on, 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 on one hand, uh, you're not getting involved and becoming involved in the drugs and alcohol and the sexual fornications and all that stuff. Well, when you did come to Christ, you didn't have to be delivered from that. Um, no. And, and that, that's a blessing. Uh, it could say a blessing in disguise. Uh, so, so, um, what was the turning point because church didn't really do anything for you because you probably didn't hear about being born again and uh, Jesus Christ having your allegiance to him outside of having your allegiance to the church. Um, did anybody ever witness to you at all, uh, uh, Rob? So um, to go about that that question a, a little differently, um, I was I, I was of the mind actually at that at that point. I was actively avoiding. If somebody said "born again" to me, I was I was like, "No, I don't want to talk to you." I, I that's not something that I you know I God's got me. I'm good. Um, and, and, that's then, a, that, and you hear that you hear that a lot. Yeah. Not so much that God's got me, but I'm good. It's good for you. <laughs> oh, that's but true. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have to say though, um, when uh, after I, I was I was married, my wife um, and I we we used to watch sermons and that kind of thing on, on, on television. And, um, and that helped a little bit because it, it put things into a, a kind of a humanistic or, you know, a, a real life perspective. <clears throat> and it made it more um, enjoyable to, uh, to, uh, to listen to and, and uh, to understand certain things. Cause I just wasn't getting what I wanted um, from, from the, uh, the traditional church experience. It just came, things seemed to be like very call and response and not really um, what I was looking for. I was looking for, without knowing it, I was looking for that relationship. Um, but there was also um, part of part of me that was just kind of trapped and, and there was something that was missing. So to tell you a quick story, I um, used to go to the, the, the church that I go to now, actually. Uh, we, we had, Clarice, uh, uh, my wife, and I were going to this, this uh, church and uh, she was going a little bit more regularly than I was. I was just going there to make sure that she wasn't joining a cult or anything like that. Um, but uh, uh, I started, uh, I would actually come in a few minutes late to avoid the, the worship music and that kind of thing. Um, it made me a little uncomfortable at first. Um, and then uh, I would actually leave a little bit before the end because the pastor would, would ask us to gather together and we'd start praying. And I wanted to avoid that as well. But I wanted to get the word and I liked what uh, the pastor had to say. So I kept, uh, I kept coming. And, and uh, more and more, I just kept hearing the, the music and reading the words up on the screen so I could, because I didn't know any of the songs. Um, and one day, a worship, one of the worship leaders told me, told all of us to put on uh, this little band around our wrist. And uh, it was a little white band that she said, here's a pen, and we're going to be singing the song. And when you feel the need, when you get a word, write, I want you to write it down on that, this band. This is something that you're going to release today. You're going to get rid of today. So if there's anything that comes up that you want to get rid of, you write it on this band. And um, and then they started singing a song by uh, Jesus Culture called Break Break Every Chain. And um, and at first I was like, I'm still in the, in the mind, like, I'm good. I don't really need to do all this stuff. And then I got a word and he gave it to me. And I'm like, all right, okay. So I wrote that word down, um, unworthiness. And um, and I looked at it, and then uh, and then another word came, and then another, and I just started writing all over this band, and soon it was covered with words that I wanted to just release and get rid of, and I kept hearing the words "break every chain, break every chain," and finally I, I had it, I, I I got it, and I, I I I tore the thing off my wrist. I went up to the 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 front, and they had like a little fire, a little pit to put things in, and I and I put the I, I threw that chain in there because. I was ready to break it and just just release it and get it away. It was amazing, and and uh, and and I did that. And then I just stayed by the altar for the rest of the sermon, and I just 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 stayed there and just felt that that release that I just it kind of felt like it was lifted off of me, and uh, it was an amazing experience. And then uh, I, I told my pastor because I knew he was going to be doing baptisms by the water <clears throat> in a few weeks from then. So I asked him if he would baptize me, and that's when. Uh, that's when things started to happen. 
so basically, um, it, 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 uh, uh, the, the scripture, as you well know, uh, Rob says, uh, my ways are not your ways, God talking. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And, and this is the first time that I've heard, and we've done a lot of shows over the years, uh, um, people in church hear a sermon, uh, it touches them, they come to the altar, they receive Christ. But this is something that that uh, that um, only God could do. Uh, yeah. And you're good. But after these words came and you wrote down in there, you saw, hey, this is showing who I really am. And 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 then you threw it in a pit, you burnt it. And, you know, it's like God says he throws our sins into the sea of forgetfulness and remembers them no more. Yeah. So you threw that into the fire, it burned, and you, you set free. And that's basically uh, your start of walking with the Lord. And 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 when that happened. Um, did, did did something happen inside of you at that time, or was it later on, Rob, where the peace started coming, the joy and the the love and things of that nature that God does deposit into us besides peace? Um, I think it was kind of like a slow burn. It it uh, it, it it helped me you know, like, but my but it helped. It was gradual, but it was it was happening more rapidly. And I and I discovered that uh, that's that I was getting that piece because I was being kind of fed the right things, and and um, I was able to get rid of the things that were kind of holding me down, holding me back. Um, so like when I said, uh, you know, I, I'm good. It, it, every I, I feel every time like I'm just getting this now. Every time I was saying I'm good, Jesus was saying to me, "Yeah, but you could be better." And so so as I um. As I kept hearing like worship music and that kind of thing, I used to put it on um, headphones at night when and I would sleep, and it would help me sleep because it, and then and now it, and and sometimes I do scripture too, because that's that's probably the 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 time when my mind is quiet and the enemy tries to take hold of it, but he can't anymore because I I, I already have, I God's already got me, and he's he's not gonna let go. Wow. Um, with the um, uh, uh, pounding, and because that's what Satan does, he pounds. You know, he, he, like with the, the meat cleaver. You know, with the meat, you gotta, you know, pound it. And 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 being uh, brought up in uh, in your own mind, because that's where the battle is, the mind and the heart uh, of being unworthy and, and being like useless. And what am I here for? Did he ever put in your mind thoughts of suicide? Not a lot. There was a little bit, but um, nothing serious. Which to me, it sounds unusual because when somebody um, has really no hope uh, of breaking out of this shell, uh, which you were in, you were, you were in a shell, you were in a in, in a big container with a lid on it. Uh, um, it's unusual because so many people on the show we've had. Uh, um, in situations like you, the thought came for suicide. You know, so that was a a blessing to you. So, so where are you now? You know what it is, I, and, and I'm sorry for interrupting you. That's all right. Um, I I had uh, I have um I had a lot of love inside me. I mean, my mom did a lot of uh, she she um she had she had some issues and everything, but she always instilled in us that um that that we love each other. And there's suicide wouldn't be something that entered my mind because I would know what I would be doing to people that I love, and I would never want to do that to them. And that's and, and that's <laughs> and that's great, Rob, because so many people commit suicide, and uh, and, and it, it, it it actually suicide just shows that you don't care about your wife, you don't care about your father, you don't care a, a, about your children. That's really who you were, a self-centered person. Yeah, you're you're blinded to that. You're blinded to that. Yeah. So uh, are you doing, uh, God has a purpose and a plan for everybody's life. Uh, um, are, are, are you uh, um, in, in teaching? Uh, do you, uh, where you see, where's God have you and, and, and where do you feel God's leading you? So I, it's, it's funny when you say yes to God, he's got a lot, he's already got a list for you. 
Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of being open to, to where he's leading me because he leads me in different directions. He puts me where I need to be. And, um, and it helps me because it, it, it enriches me. Um, but he knows that I, I can help other people. So he'll put me in different places um, in front of people so that they, they can get what, what they need. And um, so I don't know if that's really answering your question because it's not a specific thing. Um, but I'm, I'm open to a lot of different things. I mean, I'm, I'm a worship leader and, and, and a musician. So sometimes I'll be asked to do that. Sometimes I'll be asked to pray for somebody. Sometimes I'll be asked um, to, to step in and, and, and represent um, somebody's family um, in a certain situation. So it's, it's interesting where he's taking me and I'm just open to it. And um, that's that I want to say years ago, that would have been really scary for me. And it still is a little bit because it's like, well, I don't know what I'm going to be doing here, but I just have to trust him. And, and he's got me. <laughs> he always has. And he'll put me where he needs to be. And he'll, put, you know, and, and that's just it. I'll, I'll remove what the, the me from the situation. And I just say, God, what do you want me to do? You know, wh what do you want me to say? And, and just give me wisdom. And, and, and he's there. He never fails. And, and, and Rob, that's the right path. It's not my will, Lord, but your will. I, I know a man, he's in his 80s now, probably 88. He was so introverted, so, so introverted. And um, he ended up traveling uh, in his station wagon across country, back and forth, 25 times, mm. sharing the gospel of Jesus wow. Christ, going to live in a certain town, in a certain state. He never got married, didn't have any children. For a year. So just that he could get unintroverted and go to people and, and talk to people and ask them. I remember he told me, where's the arch in St. Louis? Or go up to somebody and say, that's a beautiful dog. Well, what time is it? And that just broke it. So w when COVID came, uh, he was so and, and he was so upset because it stopped him from going to the train station and witnessing to people when they get on the train. And, and, right. and that's what God uh, not only can do, but will do. And thank you so much, Rob, for coming on the show and sharing how God has taken an introverted, unworthy person, making him a valuable person for the kingdom of God and, 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 and continuing to break the chains uh, that are in mm -hmm. your life. Uh, to God be the glory. So ladies and gentlemen, just don't forget this. Uh, this would be uh, something good to go to sleep with and, and, and have a dream. Not like Rob had bad dreams. Uh, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. To know what love really means, you have to read between the lines. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he cares for you. That's why he died for you. So that you can have eternal life. Your sins could be forgiven. And you won't be judged on Judgment Day because of rejecting Christ. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. Where the sun. Mm -hmm.